Ah, is anybody out there? To the one person that's watching, thank you, sir. Or ma'am, you never know, I guess. All right, let's fucking start. New chapter, new, quote unquote, new, because I'm always fucking late. <sighs> chapter 1059, Captain Kobe incident. Starting off the chapter, we see a bird flying. That bird, of course, is Marco flying away to Sphinx Island, Whitebeard's homeland. And here we learn that uh, he hitchhiked on Sang's ship. So we do get a closer on his story, I guess. Of course, Sang's um, would not waste the opportunity to ask Marco to join for the second time. Of course, the first time it was when uh, Sang's walked on Whitebeard's ship when he was flexing his conqueror's hockey and when we got the first introduction to Whitebeard. And uh, both times, Marco rejects his offer. Uh, this time, the reason is that he's too old to babysit uh, big time pirates. So Marco leaves. Then we get uh, a little flashback about the reason why Yamato decided to stay behind. And it's not because Odin explored one and all that shit that Yamato said in the previous chapter. But because um, after the attack from Admiral Greenbull, Yamalo understood that since Kaido is uh, fucking in the bottom of a crater, Guano now is defenseless from both marines and pirates. So someone should stay behind and uh, Yamato is probably the strongest character now there. So it makes sense. And also Yamato's devil fruit, I'm pretty sure, is supposed to be a guardian deity for the land of Wano. So it makes sense lore-wise also. So I guess that's the reason that Oda decided to introduce Green Bull in this arc and have him attack Wano. He needed a justification for uh, Yamato's decision. Yamato insists on wanting to be uh, a straw hat, but uh, it's probably more of like a Vivi thing. Because uh, Vivi, I'm sure, is still considered a crewmate, even though she didn't sail with us. Marco then, in the flashback, says that he found a ship. I like that he doesn't mention Sanks, probably because... I don't know why, actually. Because Sanks, I think, mentioned that it is time now to meet Luffy, since he considers him a great pirate now. Luffy thanks Marco for saving him back in Marineford. And then Marco makes a very intriguing comment. Actually a question to Jimbe. Why back then, the old guys talking here, back in Marineford war, the summit war, why they all fucking jumped into action to save Luffy? I mean, Whitebeard did order his commanders to focus on Luffy's survival after he saw that Ace was a lost cause. I guess this is similar to what Mihawk said back in Marineford again, that uh, Luffy has the most dangerous ability to make friends or uh, allies very easily with whomever he meets. But it's like they know about the whole Joy Boy legend, but they don't explicitly say it. Or else why would this interaction be included? And now to the hype part of the chapter. Cut to the Amazon Lily, where uh, we see from afar the island. It's not how it used to be. It feels like something is missing. And it's all Hancock's fault, kinda. Because the Marines now want to capture her. And of course, the only logical way out is marriage. And now another flashback to see how Amazon Lily ended up uh, missing the top half of the island. We knew that the Marines were out to get the Shichibukai after the abolishment of the system. And we saw that Kobe, alongside a fleet of Marines, was heading to Amazon Lily. I had a vague memory of Fujitora also going there. But uh, anyway, they don't need Fujitora because they have Yamakaji. The fuck? Okay. And then we see, finally, what the fuck was the, the project of SSG that was supposedly going to replace the Sichibukai, the new pacifistas, which are called Seraphims. For those who don't know, Seraphims are a type of angel in uh, the Bible, in Christianity and uh, Judaism, you know. They are angels that their names mean the fiery ones, resembling humans uh, and have six wings. And they're supposedly agents of purification. And why was that the name of choice? Because you see, these new pacifistas are actually Lunarians, which of course have wings and also can manipulate fire. 
So there you go. Firstly, we see that one of them is a little girl that has the Lunarian wings, the fire of course on the back, but also she has stars in her eyes. And not like the Looney Tune stars after you get dizzy. In the pupil, you know, inside. We see that this new pacifistas can also shoot lasers, like the old ones, where uh, they said that Vegapunk incorporated Kizaru's lasers. As if this wasn't enough for the Amazons to handle, fucking Blackbeard shows up. I've heard many theories about Blackbeard's uh, whereabouts and what the fuck he did uh, in the meantime while well, well, we were on one or like he attacked Whole Cake Island or he went to Alabasta to bring Pluton. I mean, that was before we knew Pluton is somewhere in one or hidden. But I don't remember someone saying that he went to capture uh, Boa. He says that he has come for the Pirate Empress. You're not the only one, boy. No, I'm kidding. Wait. <laughs> um, because, of course, he wants her power. Not he specifically, I would hope. With that fucking ugly face. I mean, I do find find you beautiful, tits. I do find... I do find you... I do think you're handsome, Mr. Marshall. But uh, I think I'm in the minority. Anyway. And with Blackbeard, we see Katarina Devon and Vasco Sot. Katarina Devon, of course, has a, has a hatred against beautiful women. I guess because she looks like the child of Pinocchio with a stray dog. And then we have this fucking creep. Blackbeard starts uh, creating earthquakes. But don't worry, guys. Kobe is there to save you. He is, after all, a hero. Kobe advises Boa to surrender so they can live peacefully. Boa, of course, rejects him. She won't belong to anyone. That makes sense, especially if you consider her past, where she was a literal slave as a child to some fucking pieces of shit celestial dragons. Blackbeard's crew is getting wrecked, but by whom? And then Whitebeard, I mean Blackbeard, realizes. White hair, brown skin, black wings. It does make sense that Blackbeard um, would have an idea about the Lunarian race because Oda did reveal in an SBS that his hobby is reading about history and that he would be an archaeologist if he wasn't a pirate. Another pacifista is there which uh, holds a sword suspiciously similar to Mihawk's and this pacifista is also a child. Why is that? And he's fucking ridiculously strong. He cuts the island in half pretty much. Clashes with Blackbeard, who is demonstrably worried, frustrated. Whitebeard has the same question that I do. Why a little kid pacifista? What does it mean? The fighting continues with both Blackbeard and Hancock using their uh, signature attacks. Kobe orders the pacifista to stop because everyone has been turned into stone and uh, they will get shattered. But then we see Blackbeard with Hancock in his grasp. Of course, that means that he nullified her powers. In that moment, we also learn Boas Hancock. Boas Hancock, oh my, what am I talking about? Boas Bounty. That is 1.659 billion berries. I checked about the whole, about the secret meaning or pun with the numbers and I didn't find anything except that the 5 and 9 can be read as Koku, as in my big Koku, <laughs> as in uh, Han Koku, you know, when you pronounce it like that. Blackbeard's bounty also got increased from 2.2 billion to now 3.996 billion. And about the whole numbers thing, the 9 and 6 can be read as Kuro, which is black, you know. Hancock makes it clear that without her beauty, her power is uh, nothing, she says. And also, the next wielder of the power can undo her spell. So they're in kind of a stalemate there. And Blackbeard says as much, he says, this isn't uh, getting us anywhere. Kobe the hero who helped me in the Rocky Port incident. What the fuck is the Rocky Port incident? I mean, it's been teased to death. Here's what we know about it. We know that Law was the mastermind. It happened during the time skip. And Kobe protected the citizens. And that's why he's known now as a hero. 
And now Blackbeard says that because of Kobe, he was able to defeat Ochoku or uh, Wang Zi in the official translation and become the boss of Pirate Island. Ochoku slash Wang Zi was part of the Rocks Pirates and the Rocks Pirates were formed at Pirate Island. And it seems that after the downfall of Rocks, Ochoku occupied the island. Blackbeard wonders if when he lets Hancock go, would she be nice enough to turn everyone back? Hancock says that she will do it, but uh, Blackbeard says that it's impossible for anyone to not fall under her spell, except Luffy, of course. And also, interestingly, Kobe. Kobe seems impervious to her beauty. Maybe it's because he doesn't wear his glasses anymore. Blackbeard uh, reaches the conclusion that he has to kill her. Kobe, like back in Marineford, he's thinking about the casualties. And also like Marine, <laughs> like in Marineford, someone comes in to save the day. Who, you may ask? Sanks! No, wait. Fucking Rayleigh, the Dark King. He straight up says that he doesn't like Blackbeard. He's there to keep everyone in line, and he succeeds. Saki is also there, and we learn that she was the former empress of Amazon Lily and captain of Kuja Pirates. That goes hand in hand, you know. So Rayleigh has some good taste. And also that explains Rayleigh's connection to Amazon Lily, and maybe also why Kuma uh, sent Luffy there back in Sabode, since he saw that Rayleigh was an ally and that he would have access to the island or something, I don't know. Rayleigh says that he couldn't possibly have beaten Blackbeard one-on-one, -on -one, like they say, one-on-one, -on -one, always bet on Blackbeard. But we learned that the pacifistas, by the end, didn't have a single scratch on them. And we see that the little girl pacifista is pretty much identical to Hancock. Now, of course, we understand why they would pick Lunarians, because they have pretty much the best durability. Like Queen said about King, he's a monster capable of surviving in any natural environment. And how, how does the world government have access to the DNA or the bloodline elements of Lunarians if they are extinct now, you may ask? Of course, it's because they had King or Albert in captivity years ago, and they conducted experiments and shit. Is that why they're children or something? Because King was a child back then also. But does that make sense? I don't know. But how did they get them from the Shichibu guy? That's a better question. Hancock, as we said before, was also in captivity, but not in a research lab. She was a slave to the celestial dragons. And back then, certainly, they the world government wouldn't uh, see her as a formidable warrior, so they must have taken it afterwards. But how? How do you extract that? If it's like the DNA in our world, I guess it would be easy to get a, a hair sample or something. And as we saw, they also made a clone of Mihawk. And Mihawk, as far as we know, was never captured by the marines. He was the one capturing marines or hunting them down, you know. But why are they children again? This is what I understand. Wouldn't it be better if they were like Kuma, an exact clone in an adult form? Wouldn't they be stronger then? Also, why the fuck does the pacifista clone of Hancock has stars in her eyes? The Mihawk pacifista had regular Mihawk eyes, you know, hawk eyes. <laughs> While everyone thought that Hancock was captured and Luffy would have to go save her and all that, Oda does a complete 180 and... Uh, has Kobe captured instead by Blackbeard? Why would Blackbeard kidnap Kobe? He doesn't even have a devil fruit. He's a member of S.W.O.R.D. and maybe there is a connection with Aokiji. But hey, we will have to wait and see. Pretty good chapter. This is it for today. See you next week and uh, 